I am really excited to talk about this video because we got the attention of a Lions player, myself, in the Ant-Man, so we're going to talk about that. He's not... The, the player is a little bit upset with what the Ant-Man said, so we're going to get into that. We're going to be talking about the Detroit Lions and the players under 25, in which they're awesome. Three underrated players for the Detroit Lions and Ben Johnson, excellent OC. You're not going to want to miss this one. Let's go. Soon there's going to be other creators on here, not just me. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to see them and, uh, you know, get a different perspective on the Detroit Lions. It's going to be opening up. We're working on it right now. We're already at the meeting, so it's going to happen. Hopefully it happens before training camp, in which is about three weeks. So everything's good to go. And then you can get your favorite content creator, listen to them, talk their Detroit Lions. It's going to be live shows and, and videos. It's going to be a lot. It'll be a lot on this channel, so... It, that that's the way it's going to be. So let's get into the latest Detroit Lions news and rumors. And I got to say, this one is very fun to me because um, I, we, we tend to get the attention of DBs on this channel. I, I, I don't even know how it, it's possible, but we do. Um, and we have a Detroit Lions player who is a little bit irritated with a perception that he gets ever since he's been signed here. And he replied back to... Uh, Lionization Night slash B slash the Ant Man, because we talked about this. So here's the thing: we talked on Tuesday about uh, Amik Robertson and his ability, what he's going to do for the defense. I think he's a starter. I just don't know exactly where he's going to be on the field uh, at all times. I don't think he's a depth player. I think he's going to be on the field. So what we talked about, and the Ant Man thinks absolutely he's a depth player. We talked about that on Tuesday, and we got a response from Amik Robertson right there. He says, "Dog, y'all need to bear this depth." Player S, stop playing with me. Y'all going to see, keep the same energy. Now, it's been a perception of his since we signed him, and I really don't understand the perception right there. Just because Brian Branch plays a similar position doesn't mean he's instantly going to be a depth player. I don't think that's going to be the case. As you know, the Detroit Lions players are, are on the field, and uh, the, we just don't know exactly the type of Fortnite. He's going to be out there a lot. Um, I, you know, we just got to see what he does. We don't really know yet. It's not training camp. Yeah, we've had OTs and minicamp, but until we really see kind of where, where they're going to use him and other players, we just don't know. We just know that he's going to be used. And I think he's a, he's a great player, and I'm really excited to have him. I know the Raiders fans were upset when we got him, and that's what really intrigued my my opinion of him. Didn't really know much, so I went and searched on him before, after free agency, and I was like, oh, he's a pretty good dude. So, um. Yeah, uh, look, me and, and, and Jameson Williams. I know Jamo lists the pod. He lists everybody's pod, basically. Uh, it, do not take it as a critique from here, bro. I, I, I like you. I'm so excited to have you on this team. And uh, uh, do your thing, man. But you don't need to worry about what podcasters, what I say, or Ant Man, or Matt, Matt, anyone 97 with a ticket, or, or Woodward Sports, or just anybody, right? You, you make your own path. And, um, Man, if you're balling, you're balling, bro. You're going to be on the field. So we we love you as Lions fans and appreciate you, what you're bringing to this football team. Keep grinding. And no, I don't think you're a role player. And I think a lot of Lions fans don't believe you're a role player. But if somebody else does, don't get too upset about it. It's just an opinion. You're, you're an NFL player. You know your skill set more than we do. So, I mean, look at Levi and Wuzurike, folks. I, I, a lot of people written him off, and he came back. So... Never just write a player off. They know what they're doing. So shout out to Amik for doing that. ESPN recognizes the loaded under 25 roster. The Detroit Lions got a lot of players under the 25 spot, and that means we draft really, really well. And that is how you get a team to be good, is you draft well. We've talked about this endlessly on my channel for since I've started. It is all about the draft. It is not about free agency. With the Patricia eras, all that, and I explained why things fell. You got a draft right now. Lions been drafted right with Brad Holmes, and now the team's really good because they know how to get players to contribute right away, and they're really good players. Everybody last year mocked the Detroit Lions draft, and it being the best draft probably uh, in a very long time. I mean, you got basically in this draft last year, you had three outstanding starters, 
uh, pro bowlers, in my opinion, who could be all pros. And then you got a guy in, in Jack Campbell who's developing into a really good player right now. And so that is the ability to draft. So shout out to Brad Holmes and Aiden Hutchinson, St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs, <laughs> Sam Laporta, Panay Sewell. The names just come at you and you're just absolutely shocked because of their ability to find these talent. And what about the Derek Barnes, the Futu Malfon Woos? I mean, they're still players. This team just knows how to draft, and it's amazing. That's a testament to Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, Chris Spielman, understanding the type of players you need to have on this football team. So we basically dominate the ESPN's uh, players under 25, as it should be, and it continued to dominate because Brad Holmes is one of the best GMs in football and knows how to find talent. In the comment section right now, what do you grade Brad Holmes' inability to find talent? Me, if I had a grade, it's A+. Plus. It's uh, about as best as you possibly could get. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Three underrated players. I have not seen this list right here, so let's go ahead and jump into this list. The underrated players for the Detroit Lions, Cyan Vaki. I don't know if he's really underrated. I think I've been... I've been hyping him up a lot. I think a lot of people's been hyping him a lot. I, I may, uh, I guess you'd say he was underrated if, you know, you're not not really in with the Lions. Like if you're you're listening to videos every day, in which who's listening right now, you're all informed. Right? Like so, it's, it's the people that don't really pay attention to football twenty four seven. I can see it, but I think we all know he's going to be special. He's going to do some special stuff. I'm not saying he's going to be all the time, but he will do. Kiyuta Wusaka, I 110% agree. I think he's extremely underrated, and he was our backup last year. He had some bad games. He had some really good moments, and that's considering how our depth was last year, start the, the preseason with the offensive line, it was amazing that it came in here who we didn't even know and did a good job. He is underrated. I hope he makes the team. I like him as a backup. It's going to be hard with Christian Mahogany. It's going to be hard with, you know, other players fighting for that spot, but it's interior. So Colby Soresdale's playing tackle, so maybe that opens up for a Wusica. And I always destroy his name. But, yeah, Isaiah Williams is underrated. Um, hmm. You know, I think when we signed him, you could say he's underrated, but um, he's shown flashes of great route running. So maybe. Um, he's an underrated, but I don't even know if he makes the team at this point. So if he can't even make the team, then I I don't think that would be considered an uh, you know an underrated player. But he's very good. We'll see what he can do. He's fighting out. He's fighting it out with a lot of wide receivers. But uh, that's their underrated list. Lions should be featured on off season hard knocks. Off season hard knocks. I didn't get to watch it. I was, I was looking for the Giants. Uh, the offseason hard knocks. I heard they, they, you know, it was pretty good. And so I'd like to see it, you know, how they operate and find players and, and dictate how they assemble rosters and all that stuff. So I think it'd be fun. We, we've seen the, the Detroit Lions little documentaries after an NFL draft. It's fun. The media, or not the media, but the, the, or, uh, the group that is responsible for these videos, these hype videos for the Detroit Lions YouTube channel does is amazing. And, um, boy, it's it's literally like Hard Knocks quality. So it would be fun to see it on there, but we do get our own. We do get our own little bit on that we can get on the Detroit Lions YouTube channel. They'll do, like, the off season. It's like a two-hour video or maybe an hour video or something. So they do that, but it would fun. It would be absolutely cool to see them on Hard Knocks um, in the off season, not in, se- not, not in season, not training camp, but in the off season, see a free agency in the draft. That would... That would be really fun. Buffalo Bills, D.C., Ben Johnson's toughest OC to prepare for because he does so many different plays. If you look at the playbook, it's gigantic, and he does a lot of uh, end-arounds, jet sweeps, multiple jet sweeps. Uh, He opens up the playbook completely, and it's not bland. It's not run, run, pass, punt. It is different. When you expect to run, they'll pass. When you expect to pass on third down and like 10, they'll run it and get a first down. You have no idea what they're going to do. And that is Ben Johnson and his ability to get a player open and scheme around that type of stuff. It's just amazing. And that's what makes him one of the, the best OC in football. And 
it's not even close. He's so good. Yeah, he's not perfect. We've seen Ben Johnson make dumb decisions, right? We've seen it on here. I've called it out. You've called it out. Some of these plays he's done throughout his tenure, you're like, what? But let, let's keep it 100. 95% of what he does is amazing. And so no OC or DC is perfect of that matter, nor coach. But boy, oh boy, when you have a Ben Johnson, his ability to do what he's doing with this offense, he's a keeper for sure. Don't need to worry about any of that. So he is a solid, solid OC. And if the Lions do win a Super Bowl this year, that would be amazing. I would fully expect Ben Johnson to become a head coach at that point. I think he came back here because he wants to win the trophy. He wants to be part of historic team. Because, look, I know he becomes a head coach. Yeah, you know, he, he's well-known, right? He, and he'll get accolade on this new team. He wins a Super Bowl with the Detroit Lions. The Lions OC, he'll be immortalized. You will be immortalized in Detroit. Anybody who would be part of that team, if the Lions won a Super Bowl, would be immortalized. And you look at what Jared Goff gets. He gets the Jared Goff chance. He's beloved here in Detroit by the fans. And that's something he's probably never experienced. Many players in the NFL have never experienced what Jared Goff experienced. The amount of love that he's getting, which chance and stuff. So it's, it's a rarity. And Ben Johnson would probably like to be part of that. He likes working here. Why not win it and then move on, be immortalized, and be loved, beloved for the rest of your entire life? I tell you what, Lions win a Super Bowl. Statues are going up for a lot of people here in Detroit, and, and that's what it's all about, right? So Ben Johnson's smart. He knows what he's doing. He's great OC. Happy to have him. He ain't perfect, but nobody is. But we got a good one. Folks, in the upcoming videos, tell me what you want to See what do you want to see from training camp, all that stuff. I'll read the comments. With that said, folks, adios.